Hello, hello, hello world. Happy Thursday to you all. Welcome to Coded Life. I'm your host, uh, Sam Basu, and this is the .NET Dev Show. So welcome, welcome one and all. And uh, yeah, wherever you might be, morning, afternoon, evening. And uh, this is the regular Thursday .NET show. And I missed out last Thursday. Um, I was out, but uh, hey, I'm back and I might be a little late to this, but um, let's uh, kind of get into .NET MAUI again uh, and preview five bits and see what we can do if we start tinkering a little bit. And also, um, we released a few uh, Telerik UI components to go on top of that. So I want to try it all. Um, I actually did, I think uh, it was one week or two weeks back where I did a stream where I couldn't even get stuff to build. So yeah, fun stuff things happen, right? Uh, so um, if I could only read the instructions, I will do better. I think I've read the instructions now. I've gotten some bits. So let us uh, let us start. All right, just looking at my desktop already, which is good. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, the preview five blog post. If I can type, there you go. All right, so this is David Ortnow and the whole team putting out uh, Preview 5, kind of right um, right behind Preview 4, which came out at Build. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're working hard and fast on this. So um, there is uh, Preview 6 cooking already. Uh, so good stuff, uh, all good things. So we're going to kind of dive into uh, a couple of different apps and, and see what the experience is like. Um, for getting started um, on Windows as well as on, on a Mac, which is what my host OS is today. Um, what's the experience like for WinUI if you have to target uh, the Windows desktop? Um, so we're going to look at the default experience, the weather app, um, and um, and some little bit of Telerik UI. So let me pull that up, I think. If I go search for blogs and I'm going to search for Maui. And let's see. No, I'm searching. I'm not searching on blogs. That's why. Because we released uh, a few controls. Uh, new controls when you're supposed see that's June 18th. This is Paulia from our team. So we have a couple of new controls that we added and then <laughs> when you support, we come here to honor that commitment. Uh, good old uh, Lord of the Rings reference here. Okay, so what is this experience like uh, and what can we do on WinUI and what are the bits that we need to run it? So let's dive in here. So uh, first up, here's the weather app. Uh, the new things are animations, and we have some brand new UI components uh, like activity indicators, checkboxes, images. I think image was there. You got the stepper control now. You got some shapes, and oh, the shell is in. Uh, this is the uh, Xamarin Forms shell that uh, some of us use. Uh, that gives you that flyout menu. Just a nicer kind of starting spot for your apps. And it looks like they have been working on the single project experience. This is Jake Kirsch and, and um, that team. And um, they're trying to fix some of the packaging ways uh, of deploying WinUI apps and our MAUI apps on top of WinUI. Um, so yeah, that's all the thing. Um, and one thing I got to say, uh, this one here, uh, let's go to the .NET repo. Um, uh, now, we have, now they have docs though, um, but I'm trying to get to this one here. So this is the um, Maui GitHub repo and in there are instructions of installing stuff and then the Maui samples. The Maui samples is where they keep the sample apps. That's just the getting started experience. And they, uh, the, obviously the easiest thing to do is, I mean, you can get all the installers. You have to get .NET 6, Preview 5. You need to get um, some of these workloads, which you can install by like .NET workload command, which is nice. So you got the Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Mac OS, TVOS, 
uh, when you are you still kind of have to run it uh, differently uh, this is what I was failing on this is what I did not read the instructions carefully enough because you need some extensions you need some stuff to get it to work uh, but the, the easiest way obviously is the Maui check tool which is what Jonathan Dick and, and the engineering team put together which is the um, uh, it's a CLI tool. So this is where uh, it, the experience is a little different on Mac versus uh, Windows. So let me um, bump up the fonts here. So if I if I do uh, just the .NET tool install, it is a global install, right? Um, but I um, the other day, like I messed something up with my profiles and I could not make it work. I could not trigger the Maui check tool to function. And some of it had to do with like where things are installed um, and where things are on your path. So by default, it goes into .NET and then WAC tools. Um, so I did not have that in the path. So I think if I do an echo path, um, let me make this bigger. So essentially I had it, um, I was thinking like I could do like the home and then .NET tools. So that didn't work. But then I tried doing um, I tried doing just an explicit thing. So users like that is the name of my like home directory, uh, Sam MacBook Pro, right? And then dot dot net then tools. So that's what I had to do to make it pick it up. Uh, on Windows, it's a little different. On on Mac, we are using the ZSH uh, shell. You can also use Bash uh, profile. So you need to kind of look into that and make sure you have the um, thing in 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 your path uh, for it to uh, load it up. So once you have that set up, then you can do Maui check and then it fires up and it does your normal checks. If you have things that you need to upgrade, uh, it'll tell you. Um, this one here is saying, hey, you, you have some warnings, but for the most part, you're good. You have the, all of the SDKs, you have the workloads and I have .NET 6 preview. Um, four and then five is what it needs for the latest bits right so five two one three like that's the one we're going to use on windows and mac as well so it needs those things and it does a check make sure everything is good you hit enter and you're good to go right so that's the experience um now let's uh let's go into uh well let's let's start with this one here um because you do get the sample app so let me wipe this thing out and kind of do a fresh get to make sure I'm running the latest bits. Uh, I'm going to go into my downloads directory here. And maybe I should clear out some stuff here. So I think those are the two zip files I had for five. So let, let me blow them away. And that's preview four samples main. Let's move that out of the way as well okay now let's get it again so yep download the zip saves itself as that right so we're going to unpack that and we are going to call this just so like i i know which is what preview 5 okay so now i have the latest bits for running the sample maui app so, um, and it has the hello iOS, hello Android, Mac Catalyst, Mac OS, Maui. This is the project, that's the cross-platform project. And it looks like they still have the WinUI project separately. They're, they're trying to, I think, bring it all together eventually. They're just not there yet. Um, so we want to go in here, uh, Finder, and if, if you don't know this trick, which I did not, you can actually enable uh, a terminal um, to open right there itself. Let's see. No, on the, on the Hello Maui folder is where I need it. So services, open new terminal right there. Okay, so I now have a terminal, bump it up. And I need some instructions because I don't want to memorize and type something wrong here. So they have it listed here. So they still need the dash uh, target framework uh, switch and the moniker. So let's run this on Mac Catalyst, like as a Mac desktop application, right? Why not? So here's document build. Hello, Maui is the name of the project, and we fire it up. Ah, doesn't exist. Why not? Okay. So let's go one level up. Can you do it now? Okay. So it just needed to find the solution, or the CS project is what it's looking for. This is some little sad ambient music. Let me skip a track.
maybe. All right, it's doing its thing. Yeah, chat room, you're quiet. Uh, let me know what you want to see, or if you have any questions, I'll just chat. It's doing its thing. It's trying to do a build. And when it's done, hopefully we can see um, optimizing assemblies. Oh, it's, it's doing it. It's just crunching it down, and there we go. All right, so Mac desktop application with .NET MAUI Preview 5. It says Preview 5 right here. Um, so hold on. This actually looks a little different from what I was expecting. Uh, maybe they did not update the core sample app. Maybe like see this view like with the shell and these new controls that doesn't look like it's in the main sample app. Maybe it's in a, on a different one. I can go check uh, other parts of the repo. But this is what you get. So you get the classic entry field, the slider, uh, the switch and the image and it says document preview 5 and click me sure you want to and that works so that's that's on so that's on mac catalyst okay and we can look at some code okay so that works that works that's good to good to have that work let's close off our uh terminal windows uh i think this animations thing is actually in the weather app yeah but uh these UI components. Um, oh, you know what? I think. Let me uh, let me go look. I think this may be in David Orpno's other repo. And that's that's David. And repo control gallery. So that's the weather twenty one. Oh, let's also run the weather twenty one app. Um, but let's look at control gallery. We'll do that as well. You know, this doesn't look like look like that. Let's look at some source control gallery. Uh, it's using the shell. Okay, let's let's get that. Let's get that. Uh, just to make sure we are running all the things. Download that. So it's called control gallery. We come down to downloads. Where is the control gallery? Right there. Okay, so it's now control gallery main source. We're going to open up a terminal. And now it's not called Hello Maui. So if we can make this run, it's called control gallery, right? Okay, it's doing it. Running it on Mac Catalyst or on Mac OS again. Done. Oh, okay. So that's different from what they like. I'm looking for like this particular example, which I'm trying to find where exactly is that. So this app is showing you some colors, but it does have the shell. Oh, there is the fly. Oh, so it actually has all of the things right here. So the activity indicator. Oh, there it is. So I think it's uh, this may be just a made up screenshot or maybe just something they pulled together all of the UI in one screen. Um, ah, so hold on. I see I see something I should let's see if I can highlight messages today some Thursdays I cannot some Thursdays I can hey predator coder thank you thank you for your kind words now is fun we have some good features preview features I, I'm gonna show you um, um, if I can run it and it's, it's yeah it's fun it is fun okay so thank you for being here um, and joining me while I tinker. So let's look at their UI first and then we're going to look at some Telerik UI as well. So what is new? We have the activity indicator that's new. They have image, they have stepper. I want to look at the stepper. So this is the classic shell flyout thing, I think. Stepper. 
Oh, so see, this is the same control as like you see here. They just probably put all of these controls into a single like XAML page just to get that screenshot. So, because this app doesn't look like the screenshot. Okay, so you got some stepper colors. I don't think they do anything, but it's clearly a stepper. All right, so that works. Now, um, to Predator Coder, uh, Coder's point, uh, we actually did release uh, a few new bits. We have a segmented UI control, we have the checkbox, which like there's a checkbox in Maui as well, but this one's just a little bit on steroids. So uh, for me to run this, uh, the easiest way is going into uh, the Maui suite um, and just hitting the download button, which I already have. So when you do that, uh, it's all free, it's a preview here. So what it does is just installs it. it. It has a PKG file if you're on a Mac and it has a MSI installer if you are on Windows. When you do that, it goes somewhere like here. So documents in my, it's, there's a progress folder, which is where all of my installers go. So Xamarin bits and Maui bits. So this was our first preview, which was 525 right around build. And then this was the 618 preview, which is June 18th, right? So, uh, so you get the binaries, you get the demo app, you get some packages. So you don't need to go to NuGet, like the NupKeg file, the NuGet config is right there and it's local. So it's kind of already pre-configured for you to pick it up. And uh, this is the demo app, right? It has uh, Maui running on iOS and Android. And the new thing we added was running it on WinUI which for the life of me, I could not get it to work for some time because I did not read the instructions. I did not have all the bits, which I'll show you where I was failing. Um, but uh, it works on WinUI 3 now. But let's go ahead and make this run. Uh, so folder at the terminal, make that bigger that it's not called Hello Maui. No, it is actually called Hello Maui. Okay, so this will actually work. But we don't work on Mac Catalyst. We work on, not yet, not yet. It will, but just not yet. So I need to go pick up, uh, where is that thing gone? GitHub Maui samples. I need to pick up the thing for iOS. Where is it? Uh, there. So it's just net6.o-ios. That's easy to change. iOS. Okay. Let's see if this will build. So again, use the Maui check tool, folks, if you are trying to live on the preview bits like uh, like we are here. Uh, oh, and, and what's interesting is you don't have to kind of fire off iOS just like this because it pulls up the default simulator, which is almost always the iPad Pro for Xcode, but you can actually change which emulator you want to see it. Like if you wanted to see it on, on an iPhone, you can actually change it. So it's loading, deploying, there you go. So um, what we have here is we had a few controls already, uh, like we had, uh, um, let's go look, hold on. I don't want to miss code. Um, so let's go into docs. So we had, we had a border, we had a button, chart, items controlled. So this is the border, which is giving you that shadow look. We had, this is the items control, which is kind of like a list view. Then we had the charts and graphs, which is what again, we, are, we are known for the Telerik charts and graphs and easy to data bind, works with MVVM, uh, works everywhere. Uh, but this thing is new. This is called the segmented UI control. Um, so it's essentially kind of the classic iOS look. So you have like, it's like a tabbed look, but kind of caters to iOS and it's a placeholder control. So you can put whatever you want in it. And we can actually look at some code and try to tinker with that as a little bit. And we have a checkbox, which is nice. Um, so these are the new things and we can also make this work on WinUI 3 now. So let's let's go do that. So that works. Uh, terminal is done. Good. All right. So um, here's where I was missing out. So these are the new controls and then we have WinUI 3 support, right? So if I look at um, and oh, I, I want to go look at the animations as well. So I'm going to go back to the default um, weather app and then I'm going to look at the Teleric UI app as well. Um, so if I look at this, this is what uh, tripped me up before. So if you have to run .NET MAUI on Windows Desktop or WinUI 3, right? You need some things. First up, you need to be on Visual Studio 2019 Preview 
16.11. I think it's preview 2 is the latest one, or maybe no, preview 3 is out. Uh, it does not work with VS 2022, so don't go that bleeding edge. Stay on 2019. Uh, and then Project Reunion is the thing that we are shipping, or Microsoft is shipping WinUI 3 bits with, right? So Project Reunion 0.5 is the stable version. With it came uh, WinUI 3.5. Um, but then point eight is in the works and you need to switch to the preview mode of that to make it work and you need these two packages so <laughs> quite a bit of preview stuff going on here and unless you have these things it's just going to fail and not quite tell you why it failed so i was, I was scratching my head for a while and then i was like yeah it's written right there if i can just read the instructions would help so here i am on windows on Windows, my beloved virtual machine, which kicks the fans on at all times, but it's fine. I get to be on the same machine at least. Auto sign in. So I, I don't have Windows 11 yet. Um, folks in the chat room, anybody running Windows 11? Should I should I get it? I should, right? It's a VM. I can I can <laughs> I can spare a VM, right? Okay, this is way too big font size. A little better. Okay, so um, I have the same bits here as well. So if I do my recheck here. Is it it does need uh yeah go ahead so we can run my check here as well and it is going to say yes you are good i have mac os i have the templates and i have where is my dotnet 6 oh right there see dotnet 6 preview 5213 so i need that so we are good where did it go? Okay, press enter. Press enter. Okay, so we are good. So now, um, this is um, VS 2019 preview. And what I have done here is sitting here in my um, local drive here, program files, and then just like the build or just like the installer we had on Mac. Um, no, Predator Coder is saying it's a great handy tool, Maui Check. Yes, yes, <laughs> it is so handy and I'm glad that uh, Jonathan Dick is maintaining it so we don't have to be responsible for getting all the um, all the dependencies ourselves all the time. You could get it manually, but like as I have tried, like you often get things out of sync and then you're in trouble. So you're not sure <laughs> what you're doing wrong. <laughs> all right. Um, so in here, I have uh, the same Maui uh, 2021 618, right? So you see the binaries, you see the packages, that's the NupGeg file inside, and that's the demo app, right? So the demo app has the demo app solution, which is for iOS and Android, but then it still needs the demo app WinUI 3 as a separate solution, because that's how um, the MSI packaging works for WinUI 3, so we just have to have it separate. So that's what I am uh, trying to load up. And uh, if I launch preview, uh, let me show you this actually, because without this, it just, just does not work. Um, so if I go in here, I'm not loading up any code here. If I go into my extensions. All right, so show me the installed ones. Okay, so you see that Project Reunion, um, Preview. So this is um, this is the point eight uh, preview that I'm talking about. So you need to get that, and then you also need this MSIX packaging tool. <coughs> Excuse me. Like without these things, it just doesn't know how to build and and package. Uh, something is not nice with my background music. Let me let me switch. Let's do. Um, I don't want to do country. Let's do alternative. What does that mean? Maybe. Or maybe chill. Hold on. Too slow. Blues? Come on, give me something good. 
It's a little too jazzy. Just let me chill a little bit. Oh yeah. Spa glow? Fine. Why is it difficult to get like a nice chill from Predator code is saying I have to say it's fast for a VM. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I'll show you Predator code. Like I'm giving the VM quite a bit of juice actually, so it runs fast. Um, I cannot get a good thing going. Uh, instrumental resist. I don't know what that is, but we'll we'll keep it for a bit. Um, so. <laughs> Let me show you Predator Code, um, Predator Coder, I should say. Uh, now, where's my preview? Um, mm, mm, mm. So this is a is a beefy Mac, so I can give it some things. I don't know if I can show you while it's running. Yeah, maybe it, I can. So I am giving it um, eight cores. <laughs> and uh about 16 gigs of no not 16 1634 yeah about 16 gigs of memory so I'm, I'm giving it a fair amount of juice for it to run okay so um you need those two things okay preview and msix build packaging without that it will not work it will just not work um so let's go back to the start window that's the demo app win ui3 uh, oh, it needs admin privileges for some reason, so go ahead and do that. And right, and load this up. It's a little finicky, like given its preview bits, um, I'll show you the other thing that I was trying and I was like, why is this not building? But I was able to get it to build yesterday, so let's see if it'll work again today. Ah, oh, give me something nice. Ah, there you go. It's better. Load the musical volume a little bit. There you go. Now we have something nice. Okay, so now you have these uh, two solutions. It's ready, it's loading up its dependencies. So you have Hello Maui WinUI 3, and then you have the WinUI 3 package which is what it uses so you have to build each one before it will do the uh, deploy so build has started keep in mind it's uh, it's doing it within a VM while I'm streaming so it's, it's just Takes a little bit of a little bit longer than usual. Predator coder. Uh, oh, well, you're saying something. Uh, the developer will try to make it a single folder in future in the roadmap. Yes, yes, yes. That that is the goal uh, that Dot Maui has. Um, so they don't have to have a separate, and I think that's what you're referring to, yeah. Okay, so that succeeded, and now we can, we can deploy. On the local machine, it still does the packaging, and then runs it as, oh, I did a debug, so it's going to load up all the debugging things which I don't need. That's fine. There you go. When you add stuff, okay? Jeez, that took some time to run because I did not have the bits. You need to have the right preview bits, okay? So here's our checkbox. You, you see how it kind of looks different between iOS and, and Windows. Now it's much more squarer. Here's our little uh, uh, kind of items control or list view. And then you have the charts, you have the graphs, and everything works. This is our segmented UI. Still looks fine on Windows, I think. So again, this is just a placeholder, so you can put whatever little things you want inside of it like you put that at the top of the page and then it works okay so we are finally able to get it to work there's the shadow the border um i think you can unassign tasks and then these numbers go on, go up and down so 
they're able to run, right? That's good. Now this one, if you look at the dependencies here um, on the packages, so what it's doing here is it's depending on, can I zoom? Let's see, can it zoom? Yeah, it can. All right, so it's using Maui 6.0 preview 5, um, but then it's using some compatibility mode because some of our controls are uh, co running in compatibility, some of them are handlers, and it's using Reunion uh, 0.8 preview and then also Turek Maui 6.0. 18 right so that's all the bits you need to get this bad boy to run and it's quite a bit but at least we have win ui 3 support now so this will just get more flushed out as preview 6 rolls around and they keep working more on minimizing the kind of the friction that we have to run things on win ui but things are headed in the good direction so that's all i wanted to do with windows so let me close that down and the rest of the time we can just be in mac because this is cross-platform code anyways should work everywhere so we can just happily stay in our on our Mac. Close that, close that, done. All right, now I do want to go back to the Windows, uh, no, the, the weather app because this one here actually has some of these animations that, um, that are new in Preview 5. Okay, so let's find the weather app, this one here. Oh, it's still under David's uh, repo. So that's weather 21, which I think I had it from way back in the days. So let me blow that away. Uh, yeah, this one here. Let me go wipe that out and get it fresh. I don't know what I'm doing with all of these bits. I don't need those anymore. There you go, gone. Uh, now we can go up here download weather 21 there it is there it is and that's a source code uh, okay so we can go up to finder open a terminal and this time we're gonna keep the terminal open because we want to tinker um, now I forget the thing again what's it called um, Let's run it on Mac Catalyst. And this is where they have some of those integrations with uh, the desktop that are nice. Now it is not called Hello Maui. What is it called? It's called Weather 21. Weather 21. Yeah. So we build. It's nice when the tools work, right? Because sometimes the tools don't work and the builds don't function. <clears throat> One thing I, I will say, they they had a breaking change in oh hold on, that's not good. What is the error? The command exited with code one. Really? That's new. Can I do this on iOS? We'll wait for this to build. Um, but one thing that they did change and that kind of broke some things in um, .NET 6 uh, it's called the work oh it's coming up Hold on. Uh, so it's called the workload yeah this guy so you may run into this and if you do there's this thing called the workload um, uh, auto props locator essentially what it means is like how the ms build runtime uh, the the build system picks up the sdk and they have it as a separate like json configuration now and that might break your ms build if you're not in sync with visual studio updates um, so if, if you do go ahead and, and look at this i think what you have to do is set one um, path 
like this MS build enable workload resolver, you might have to set that to false and then MS build can pick up. Um, so in case you're stuck with that, like I was, okay, so this one did build. So we have it on iOS. There we go. So this is a beautiful weather app. And I think there are animations and may not have the shell, but I think if I go into favorites here, Oh, okay. So that, that's where you see that how, how the tiles kind of layer up. There's a little like cascading thing. So that's the new animation. And I think the, the maps thing is, um, native. And what is nice here is I can, I can right click here and maybe they don't have it here. No, they don't have it here for some reason, but you could actually right click and let's see, can I do it when I'm on the favorites? No, it's not showing for some reason. Because they have some custom um, menus here, context menus that you can integrate closely with uh, the, the OS that you're running on. So this layering of the tiles, that's new, right? And it's, I think, uh, also responsive. So if I run this on on, a, on iOS, like iPhone simulators, it's actually not going to show this view, but it's going to show a slightly different view. So let's take a look at how like this, <coughs> excuse me, this works, this, this particular animation, because that's new, right? So let's close this, close that. Mm. Yep, didn't want to do that. You want to do that? Don't save. So we can go here, quit that, and uh, mm, let's do. No, the terminal is fine here. So what I want to do is actually go into. Um, I am already on source for this for file, so I can open this up. Go dot. Uh, yeah, trust the authors, whether 21. All right. So we're not doing WinUI. We are just doing, uh, yeah, I'm not doing here much in Visual Studio Code. I am just looking at the code and I'm probably just going to still change a couple of things, but use the CLI to uh, build and debug. Okay, so we have pages. So favorites page, home page, map page, which is pretty apparent, settings page, right? So let's look at the favorites page here. And I hope the fonts are big enough for you to see. So this is the XAML markup uh, for my, or for the Maui uh, weather app. So there's a grid, there's a main section scroll. Um, and if we were to look at the sample code that uh, David had here, uh, so there, there's this technique of using a data template called the favorite, uh, whatever you can call it, and then using the attached handler. And so like whatever be your layout, like this one's using a flex layout, which is using that same template, could be a grid, could be a stack panel, whatever you need. But anyway, you can get to the template when the template is kick, kicks in while it's trying to appear or render, you can do an on attached. And I think this is where the magic is like the little cascading effect. So it uh, looks like they're just going through the tiles and then just doing a little fade to, because fade to is one of the animations you can do rotate to, scale to, translate to. So there is a fade to and there's a little delay. So that's what's going on. Okay, so let's find that. So here's the favorite template. Here's the frame. Um, and then there's some padding, there's a grid inside, there's the image label, there are some stack layouts inside, there's a search box, and this is the flex layout. Oh, this one is also using the favorite template here. Mm, okay, so what's happening in the code behind? Binding context is the view model, um, which let's look at the view model here. Where are the view models? Maybe it's in the models. No. Where are the view models? View models. Favorites view model. So weather service. Uh, when it does a fetch, it does a get locations. It can update the favorites. So nothing out of ordinary, really. Just the regular um, view model stuff. 
So we want to go back to the pages and look at this page here. So on the code behind, um, on the nav bar, active tab is favorites, on appearing. Here is the task delay and then it calls this, <coughs> excuse me, this um, function called transition in, which is this. This is where what's doing the animation. So fade to that. Um, can I do something else just to change it up? Let's see. What else can we do? So rotate two is one. There is no IntelliSense. I think that'll work. Um, I don't know what type of things it'll take. Let's take a look. Well, this is going back to the animations. Uh, let's do rotate to animates rotation property. So what does it take? Uh, parameters, visual element. It takes the visual element. Uh, okay, so the very thing that I'm on. Mm. I don't know if I can give it the frame that we are on. And then it takes the length and the rotation value and then the easing function. So it takes a bunch of things. Hold on. Let's see what, what else can we just try with. Uh, scale to translate to. What is scale to? Scale to. What does that take? It also takes the visual element. It's about the same, so for all of them. And the fade to is using the... But look how it's actually not been given the uh, actual visual element and it still works. So maybe it's fine. Opacity, length, easing. Okay. Let's, let's try changing it to what it was. And... Can we change it up to you know 2000 and let's increase the delay to 100 so we save that and now we can fire up this build again so we are using the cli to do the build changing code in vs code which is not supported as an editor but it'll still pick up the files that are changed so it's actually a decent workflow kind of like dotnet watch um, without it being explicitly watching it so you can do you have to do a build okay let's see what we did okay we're going to favorites uh, we really slowed it down this is interesting okay so these animations are working which is nice Okay, so we'll keep that on so that way the animations work. Okay, um, now can I do can I do a rotate to? Uh, it takes a double, then a length, and an easing. Okay, let's see what we can do. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Ah, look who's here! Look who's. Uh, Look who's lurking in the chat room here. It's my good friend. Mr. Lance McCarthy. Hey, hey. Good to see you, Lance. Good to see you. So Lance, uh, Lance actually helps me out a lot. Lance is, Lance is awesome. He helps out um, anytime anybody's having issues with our UI. Let's just, let's just say that he and his team figured out everything. And uh, with, with Maui Bits, Lance and me have had our fair share of struggles with preview bits, just not working. Uh, so Lance, I was able to get WinUI 3 to work. Um, and it of course works on iOS or Android, but uh, let's just say it was a struggle um, because I, I wasn't reading clearly. Uh, if I go look at um, uh, the Maui uh, repo, 
they really want you to get uh, these two things. Like you need to be on 2019.16.11. So Lance and me were just talking about this yesterday. So you need to have the point eight preview and you need this MSIX packaging tool extension. Without it, it just doesn't work. And then you have to do the builds separately and then finally the, uh, the package uh, project can build and then it can deploy. So I was able to get it to work. But now we are looking at um, uh, the preview five bits again, some of the animations that go into it uh, and, and what we can tinker. So I am on VS Code uh, trying to change a few things and uh, on iOS we don't have VS for Mac support yet, but uh, we, can, we can go around with CLI. So um, what was it going to do? I was going to do the rotate two and see if I can get that to work. No intelligence, obviously. Rotate two. Okay, now what does it need? It needs. I'm going to assume that it doesn't need the visual element because the other one didn't. Okay, it needs a rotation uh, length and an easing function. Okay, what if I don't give it the easing function? Easing is default. Length. So it needs the rotation and length. Let's just see that. Um, rotation is a double, okay, one, and length is in two, 2,000 seconds at, or 2,000 milliseconds. Let, let's see. Let's let's see how badly we screw it up. Um, go to the build again. My wife is out of town, so I have the kiddo um, downstairs just playing by himself uh, with, uh, we, we do have a babysitter and uh, he has gotten a new laser tag uh, thing, uh, so it's keeping him a little busy until lunchtime, which is probably coming up in like 15-20 minutes, and then he'll start getting hangry and then all world will break loose, but until then I'm good. And actually it's pretty silent downstairs, I don't hear a lot of ruckus uh, okay so let's go to the favorites oh oh boy uh, we have really messed it up because it doesn't even show because it doesn't know what to rotate so the app is good but I have messed up the rotation all right all right what else can we do I'm just trying to do one more thing to work scale 2 is about the same Maybe I'm just using the things wrong. Scaling, it should be like how big or small is it, right? It needs to this view. Scale, it used the length in milliseconds. And then an easing function. Uh. Maybe I just didn't give it enough, but it, it does do the build. Scale to, then it needs, let's give it like, let's make it like double the size. And then I need to give it the length over milliseconds, which is let's say 2000. And then the easing function. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, let's try this. We, we don't have any intelligence, we, we don't even know what we're doing or if it's going to build, so we are kind of in the dark here. What, what, what I can do is I can um, try going into the generic UI and if I can um, add some of the generic bits in here. No, no, I have screwed up the animations entirely. Okay. All right. I don't know how to make this work. Okay, we'll keep it. Fade to... Lance is here. Make sure the call to the scale to is being called on the UI thread. Uh, okay, it should be on the UI thread. It's on, so it's, it's, 
trying to paint this frame like this page and it's doing it on on appearing and then this transition in is being called for every tile that it's trying to paint so i, I think it's on the menu at it it should not be going off on a background thread okay so fate 2 still works uh but i but the, the other ones i think they just need more parameters that i don't know how to give it the other parameters so we really kind of slowed down the fading to get that cascading effect so that's fine but uh, i don't know how to do the other ones see the on attached like that's the frame like that's the center the tiles and uh, tile count is going up would be nice if i can get at least one more thing to work to <laughs> make sure that they're like this it's legit that they are supporting all of these new things now translate to what does that do uh, it's not even here oh no it's here transitions translation x and y okay so maybe lance you can you can tell me here so each one of them seems to be taking this like the view that it's supposed to be working on but like fade 2 doesn't need it like if, if i go into the fade 2 even that needs the view but it doesn't need that view or the easing function like fade 2 can work just on opacity and the length so i'm not sure why the other ones cannot um, but if i do uh, a translate to looks like it takes like two doubles and then the length all right let's try one more and then we'll switch so let's translate to you know two and three i don't know x and y uh 2000 weight that's fine run Lance is saying it is an extension method, so you can skip the first parameter when using like tile that method. I see. Okay, makes sense. Okay, let's see if translate will work. No, I just do not know what parameters they expect or how to make it work. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, we were just trying to mess around with uh, um, animations anyways, so let's just say Fade 2 works and the other stuff doesn't work yet. Or maybe I'm just not able to make it work. Okay. Um, there is, however, the... Um, is this using the shell? Uh, I have... A, maybe not. Stack layout flex menu no it's using a nav menu it's not using the shell the shell is in the other controls gallery uh, and and here are yeah this is not using the shell abs ammo it's not doing anything out of ordinary yeah okay so let's um let's go look at um I'm going to close this and uh, go look at uh, some Telerik UI code and that should be setting where is that at it's in my documents progress 618 last preview bits demo app right so we're going to pull up uh, a terminal right there Make that bigger and let's do code yes trust is this new or has this always been there i don't use vs code as much so maybe i just don't know um hello maui is where we want to look at yeah i don't i know you cannot load up all the things for your studio but thank you um so let's make sure we can build um Let's do, ours is called Hello Maui. Oh no. Oh, 
Tell him we not the E there. There. Okay. So we have the checkbox, we have the segmented UI, and we have the charts and graphs, right? Yeah, let's look at some of this code because this should be fun to look at. Um, so we are going to look at Hello Maui, the view models. I think everything is pretty much in main page. So it pulls in all the libraries uh, that you need. Um, so the input controls are com running in compat mode. The chart is compat. Uh, there's a primitives and then there is a... Uh, these ones are the handlers, right? So I think in our startup, you will see that um, the ones that are running in compact mode are the buttons, the charts, the segmented UI, the checkbox. And then the handlers are the item controls and the border, right? So it's a, it's a mixed bag. Um, oh, so Lance is saying, hold on. For feature reference, I saw it fade to and opacity, which is double value that ranges from. Oh. I see. I see. I see what what Lance is trying to say. I will highlight that. Yeah. Yeah. The the fade to works, Lance. I, I just could not get the other ones to work, which I wasn't sure like what parameters I should pass on. I'm just trying to tinker with some of the newer animations. So it is what it is. Um, I, and I'll, I'll play around more, see what I can get to work. So that's that. These are the registered things we have. Uh, so two handlers and four uh, controls in compact mode. And with that, we can come in here. Here's our red border showing that uh, little surround uh, surround on that uh, profile picture. We got the button. Uh, we have red borders around the image. We have the red border around um, a bunch of things here. That's the new segmented control. Uh, notice how it says Maui, this, this, this. And items control binding is two way. And then there is this checkbox right there. And we have more item control, and then we have the chart right here, binding to some categories, and then we have the other chart. This one's the one is the um, one is the bar chart, one is the uh, regular uh, Cartesian chart. Yeah, so this one has the bar series, while this one has the category binding. So that's the UI markup, and I'm sure like code behind is nothing here. Uh, yeah, it's just um resetting a few things so uh that's how we render things here and it's the start so that's the segmented control um so this is just a way of adding stuff so we can add whatever else we want in it so string let's call it um should i no too early no, it's not dead I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get burned. Hold on, <laughs> it's not dead. All right, good, happy. Um, X string. Okay, so let's see if we can still make it real. Hello, Maui. Yeah, go. So we are just adding one more um, segment to that control. And while it's coming up, well, we'll give it a second. I want to see like how we can stick some things into that segmented control. And maybe that's the last thing I will do because I have a hard stop at in like 10 minutes. It's kiddos lunchtime. Okay, so now UWP is finally showing up here. Yay! Okay. Okay, that's good. Now, I mean, these are all technologies. We don't need to say UWP is fine. We can just say... UWP, 
And let me go quickly look at some of the docs. I don't need this stuff. I do need these. Segmented control, getting started. It's probably too small here. And so it's incompatibility. You can set colors, sure. You can control which one is selected with a background color. We can disable. Mm, oh, so this is how we disable. Let's copy that. Let's uh, let's see if we can make this work. Uh, so it's a zero-based index, right? So we have four things here. We can come down here, and before anything works, we can say that now it's not called the segmented control. What is it called? And it is not called anything. Yeah, we need to give it a name. Mm -hmm. What is it called? X name. And we are going to call it my segmented control. Yeah. Okay, so with that name, we can pick up that particular thing because there are multiple uh, segmented controls here. here. That. And we are setting the third one to false, which means the third one should be disabled, I think, right? Can't tell unless we do a build and do it blindly. Uh, sure, Gartner build. And this might be the last thing I can do uh, in terms of tinkering. And then the next uh, next time I'll pick up more. We can actually use the segmented UI to kind of structure our whole page and put things. Oh, there, right there. See that? So we have we have four. We have Xamarin, Maui, UWP, but then WinUI, it's it's disabled, right? So. Yeah, so the basics are starting to work and we can start tinkering uh, more with more of the controls and how the binding works, how the animations work. So I'll do a lot more of that coming up and maybe actually uh, try to migrate an app that I have for Xamarin Forms over to Maui. Uh, I think that would be interesting uh, exercise uh, to do. Okay, so um, like I said, I, uh, I got a hard stop. So um, Let's stop right here. Uh, at least the builds work. At least I was able to deploy. Uh, so uh, Predator Coder, Lance, and others, thanks for hanging out with me here in the chat room. Uh, I'm able to build and deploy the latest Maui stuff, which is, again, not quite the latest now. They're already working on preview six. It's coming up soon, I hope. Um, yeah, so later, uh, like Lance says, later, everyone. Uh, take care and keep coding be happy be productive and take care of yourself and i shall see you on the next stream okay all right bye bye for now